When I look at diversification, I look at it from a little different standpoint. I look at it from a taxable versus tax-free standpoint. Most people tend to be saving money in tax-deferred vehicles like their 401Ks, their IRAs, their SEP plans. Now, while that may be good, and I think it's kind of accepted financial planning wisdom that it is good, uh, what happens is that when you go to take the money out, you're going to be taxed as ordinary income. So it's kind of a sad fact that over the, uh, the course of the average American's life, about a third of their income is going to go to taxes, and unfortunately most of that comes when they're going to need it the most, which is in retirement. So I'll give you an example of that. What ends up happening is someone, if someone's taking out $5,000 a month out of their IRA, they're going to end up probably, that's about $60,000 a year, they're going to end up paying about $7,000 a year in taxes. So over the course of retirement, you know, that's about $140,000 of their wealth that gets transferred to the IRS. So if the taxes aren't bad enough, it's also the interest that they could have earned on that money that they have now lost. So when you kind of add up the interest they could have earned, even a 5% rate of return, plus the money they paid to the IRS in taxes, that's about a quarter million dollars or pretty close to that that you would transfer to the IRS over that 20-year time frame. So now back to where it comes to contributing to your IRAs and your 401Ks, I, I sometimes wonder if that's just one of those things that's been repeated so many times that everyone thinks it's true and no one ever really checks the math. Because when you add it up, you go, wait a second, did I really save that much money in taxes uh, by taking that little tax deduction up front like I did in my 401K or my SEP plan or my IRA and then paying taxes on that entire amount when it grows later on? Now, of course, there's times when you want to take the matching and there's different situations, but I think we need to focus a lot more on getting money tax-free and, and, and doing that on a, uh, is, can make a big difference uh, down the road. Now, you don't get the tax deduction up front, uh, but there's basically three basic ways you get tax-free income. One of those is the Roth IRA, which Roth IRAs are a great way to save money if you don't make too much money. A lot of people make too much money. They can't even contribute to a Roth, or maybe you want to save more than five or six grand a year. And a lot of people just don't want the government strings attached as well. The other way is you have tax-free municipal bonds. Um, no, nothing wrong with tax-free municipal bonds, but they just haven't averaged that well over the last 10 years, talking about 3%. Now, the third option, like we talked about on the show last week, is life insurance policies. And we can outperform, uh, we can get a lot higher yields in those types of in life insurance policies than we can. We have more flexibility and more liquidity. And, in fact, I have a video series that we have, a brand-new video that I just came out with that talks about that. Um, so I would say a good first step is to kind of call and get one of those videos sent out. I can email it to you. Just leave your information on my voicemail at the office as we're here doing the show. But that number over there is 480-970-5663. That's 480-970-5663, and that's a good first step to start with.